When Irish military band leader John William Fenton visited Japan in 1869, he was shocked to discover that Japan lacked a national anthem, so he offered to create one. Called Kimigayo, which roughly translates to His Imperial Majesty's Reign, the melody blends traditional Japanese court music with Western orchestral arrangements. You can detect the influence of traditional Japanese music here, before it transitions to a more Western arrangement here. The lyrics were taken from a 10th century Japanese poem, but the melody and finished anthem were the result of multiple drafts, revisions, and collaborations between Fenton, German musician Franz Eckert, and Japanese composers Hiromori Hayashi and Yoshiisa Oku. The creation of a Japanese national anthem by an international cohort of musicians demonstrates Meiji Japan's values as it entered the 20th century, including loyalty to the emperor, the adoption of Western culture and technology, and nationalism. Today we'll examine how Japan emerged as the dominant power in Eastern Asia and answer our two guiding questions. In what ways did Japan become more westernized during the Meiji era? How and why did Imperial Japan expand and acquire territory in Asia? We'll also tackle our big picture question. How did competition between empires affect their colonies and territories? After the Meiji Restoration, Japan embraced Bunmae Kaika, which was a policy of westernizing Japan during the Meiji era from 1868 to 1912. Emperor Meiji believed this was necessary in order for Japan to modernize and compete with the West. He sent diplomats to Europe and North America to study Western practices that would benefit Japan. Japan wanted to emulate the democratic principles of the German constitution, which outlined a parliamentary system where laws were created by elected representatives. Japan also wanted to maintain the emperor's supremacy, so it looked to Britain's constitution, which upheld the authority of the British monarchy. Japan was similarly inspired by the British Navy. As you already learned, Britain's navy was highly organized and its steam-powered gunboats and battleships had defeated China during the Opium Wars. Japan had similar expansionist ambitions, so it decided to modernize its navy. Additionally, Japan modeled its education system after the free, compulsory public school systems in Germany and the United States. For the first time, Japan allowed foreigners to become educators and encouraged students to study abroad. Japan also welcomed scholars and experts from foreign nations who could share their knowledge, like British architect Josiah Condor. In 1877, Condor was hired by the Meiji government as a professor of architecture. He designed several buildings in Japan and was dubbed the father of modern Japanese architecture. One of Condor's projects was the Rokumeikan, which was designed to impress Western visitors and, except for the garden, contained no elements of traditional Japanese architecture or design, as seen here. The Rokumeikan hosted elaborate banquets for Western diplomats and Japanese elites dressed in the latest Parisian fashions. Guests danced to Western-style music and were served French dishes. The Rokumeikan became a controversial symbol of the Westernization of Japan. Particularly in light of a growing nationalist movement, many felt that Japan should celebrate its own history and culture instead of trying to imitate the West. Let's pause here and answer the first guiding question. In what ways did Japan become more westernized during the Meiji era? As Imperial Japan developed into a modern industrial power, it also set out to expand through colonization. Like Western empires, Japan was motivated to establish colonies to expand its power and influence, gain access to resources, land and labor, and embark on civilizing missions to spread Japanese culture. Japan's expansion began with the annexation of Okinawa in 1879. Okinawa is part of the Ryukyu Islands and home to the indigenous Ryukyuan people. Okinawa was also a Chinese tributary state, or a subordinate state that submits regular payments or tribute to a more powerful state in exchange for protection. However, Okinawa had secretly maintained diplomatic and trade relations with Japan. 
Japan annexed Okinawa despite China's objections and the resistance of the native Ryukyuans. The Ryukyu king was deposed and forced to relocate to Tokyo, and many of his supporters fled to China. Japan then set out to eliminate Ryukyuan culture and force the native people to assimilate to Japanese culture. Despite resistance, forced assimilation was largely successful. To this day, Japan considers native Ryukyuan people to be Japanese and does not recognize their status as an indigenous group. Japan further expanded its empire in the First Sino-Japanese War. The war was fought between China and Japan over the Korean Peninsula between 1894 and 1895. Although Korea was also a Chinese tributary state, its strategic location and natural resources enticed Japan. But Japan struggled to gain a foothold. In 1884, a pro-Japanese coup in Korea was thwarted by Chinese troops. The following year, China and Japan agreed to withdraw troops from Korea. However, when rebellion erupted in Korea, the Korean king asked China to intervene by sending troops. China obliged. Japan viewed this as a violation of their agreement and sent 8,000 of its own troops. War was declared shortly after. Though China had the larger military, Japan's was more modernized and better equipped. China ultimately surrendered. The war concluded with the Treaty of Shimonoseki in 1895, which included the following provisions. 1. Korea was declared an independent kingdom. 2. China ceded several territories to Japan, including Taiwan and the Liaodong Peninsula in southern Manchuria. And 3. Japan was given trading privileges in Chinese territories. Japan's victory demonstrated that it had developed into a major world power. This concerned several Western nations, including Russia. As you previously learned, Russia invaded Manchuria during the Boxer Rebellion. However, it became increasingly difficult to hold the region due to violent and unrelenting resistance. Russia reluctantly agreed to withdraw from Manchuria, but it did not follow through. Because China had ceded part of Manchuria to Japan, this created tension between Russia and the Japanese Empire. As tensions grew, Russian Tsar Nicholas II was encouraged to continue expanding east by his cousin, Germany's Emperor Wilhelm II. In a letter, Wilhelm told Nicholas that he would be the savior of the white race by defeating Japan in the so-called Yellow Peril, a racist term for the military threat posed by Japan and other East Asian nations, which was seen as a threat to the Western world and white supremacy. While the Tsar hemmed and hawed, Japan attacked the Russian fleet at Port Arthur in Manchuria. This marked the beginning of the Russo-Japanese War, which was a war fought between Japan and Russia over territories in Manchuria and Korea between 1904 and 1905. A series of battles were fought, culminating in the Siege of Port Arthur. The siege saw the use of modern weapons of war like grenades, machine guns, howitzers, radios, and radio jamming, as well as trench warfare and naval mines or underwater explosives. Japan also used propaganda or biased or misleading information used to promote a particular cause or point of view that presented the Japanese as modern and civilized compared to the uncivilized Russians. In hindsight, the siege was a preview of the new modern warfare the world would soon experience only a decade later. Foreshadowing. <laughs> it is unclear if Russia's surrender was more a result of Japan's decisive naval victories or the result of Russia's internal turmoil and public pressure to end the war. Following Russia's surrender, treaty negotiations were held in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and facilitated by U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt. The Treaty of Portsmouth required Russia to relinquish territories to Japan, including southern Manchuria, and recognize Japan's claims to Korea. Let's pause here and answer the second guiding question. How and why did Imperial Japan expand and acquire territory in Asia? Japan's victories challenged the West's confidence in its own military and racial superiority. But the competition to become a dominant world power was just beginning. As empires continued to expand, form alliances, and seize control of contested territories, the world found itself on the precipice of a new kind of conflict. But over the precipice we go because history is everywhere. Hey.